aren't you glad for that day that Jesus came into your life? Changed your life and made you a new creation in Christ. Behold, all things passed away. Behold, all things become new. We are the temple of God tonight. It's not just this building. This building is beautiful. But it's beautiful about it is that God chose us to be his temple. If you turn with me, if you would, or if you have your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. He made us a temple. Notice what he says. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. When we came to Kentucky in 1977, most of you here weren't born or you were little kids, but we came <clears throat> to a town called Glasgow, Kentucky, and sent, God sent us there, and we restarted the work there. We, it was ready to close, and uh, we started, restarted the work. And in the process, God began to do some things, and he sent into our church a family. He was a farmer. In those days, tobacco was big business, more than it is now. And uh, he raised, they don't raise tobacco in acres, they raise it in pounds. And he raised 40,000 pounds a year. And he was also a mechanic. And he was a mechanic that worked on farm equipment and was very good at it. But there was something else he did. And that was he restored cars. And one day they came to church and it was quite a family. And they didn't have all their kids. Most of their children had grown. Um, they had 13 children altogether. She didn't weigh 100 pounds, and she had 13 kids. And um, anyways, there were some of the kids were still at home. They all came to church, and they got saved. And one day, he wasn't in church, and I asked uh, Marie. I said, where's Andy? She said, oh, he went up to the state of New York. She, I said, what did he go up there for? She said, well, he went up there to get a car. And she said, I said, well, is he going to drive it back? She said, no, it don't run. He said, it, it, it's been sitting in a, a barn he, for years, and it just doesn't run. It was a 1935 or 36 Ford convertible. And um, so she said he went up and he paid, I don't know, four or $5,000 for it and didn't even run. He brought it back, and he showed it to me. He said, what do you think, Pastor? I looked at this car. It was a convertible. The top had been all chopped away. Now, follow me. i got a point here. The rats and mice had got a hold of it. They chewed the seeds up. They had chewed off the, half the top. Uh, the, the paint was gone. The tires were flat. The motor hadn't been started in years. He didn't know what. And he looked at that, and he was just happy. He bought this car and brought it all the way back from New York. <clears throat> we, 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 when we left, we left a, a, a year or so later and uh, went and pastored another church, not here in Richmond. And... Um, but we went back to that town about two years after he'd gotten this car. And for some reason, we were back there, so we stopped by to see Marie and Andy because they were precious to us, and God had done a great work in their lives. And he said, I want to show you something, Pastor. So I went out in the garage, and I saw the most beautiful antique Ford you'd ever see. A new top, new seats, new the motor. It ran like a... It, it, I don't know if you've ever heard the, the uh, expression, it purred like a kitten. And it just, it just ran great. And he looked at that, and I looked at that. And he was excited. And, of course, he didn't keep me. He did them to sell. He, he didn't. He would sell them. So I don't, I'm sure he got twice what he put into it. But as I walked away that day, God spoke to my heart and said, one day you were like that the first time. He said, you were like that. You were like that old, can, that Ford. Remember that Ford, Darwin, that you saw? He said, you were like that. Nothing, nothing good to look at, nothing pretty to look at, and nothing about it. Just, just a, a person who was in sin and, and on your way to hell, destroyed, and nothing pretty. Or draw man and be handsome. But look what God did to that car. And he did it for you and I. We were nothing. We, we, were, we were nothing as a sinner. But when God saved us and God washed away our sins and brought us in to his house and we became his temple. We are now the temple 
of the Holy Ghost. We're God's temple. Dr. Robinson for two weeks has talked about the, the temple and the tabernacle, and those are great. And if I, I might be wrong, but I think that Solomon's temple was considered one of the seven wonders of the world. Great, you know, beautiful and all that. And, but the greatest and most beautiful temple is around, is you and I. Filled with the power of God. Washed in the blood. Sin's gone. No longer to be remembered again. <clears throat> Remember that. Your sins are gone. Did you know when you got saved, God lost his memory? What do you mean? He said, I remember your iniquities and your sins no more. When you and I became a Christian, the sins were washed away. He took the blood and, and washed our, our, our sins away and no longer. So he doesn't remember our sins anymore because we're saved. Amen. We're washed in the blood. We are a new temple of God. And God's washed us and cleansed us. And we can rejoice this morning or tonight because we are part of the temple of God. Amen. That ought to excite you to know that you might not be pretty in man's sight, but you're beautiful in the sight of God. Amen. We're the temple of God. We're the glory of God. We're the power of God. We're the splendor of God. We're the, the blessing of God's upon us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm supposed to teach, but forget it. Amen. I'll tell you what. Listen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Quote that, Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become. When you and I became a child of God, God took away our sin. Amen. He washed us. Amen. And he looks down and sees us, doctor, and we're cleansed. Amen. Oh, I'll tell you what. As long as you walk with God, you're his temple. Doesn't mean once I get saved, I, I can go out and do what I want to do. And I'll tell you, that's a tragedy that's being taught in the church today uh, by some. That once you're saved, you're saved. You can go out and have a live it up. No, you can't. When you're saved, there's a life-changing experience that takes place. And you no longer do the things of the world. Those things I once did, I no longer want to do. And those things I didn't want to do, I now want to do. Amen. Serving God. There became something I didn't want to go to church. The only reason I went to church as a young man, because I was dating my she was my girlfriend, then my wife. And you know what our dates were? Three nights a week to church. <laughs> and then to a ball game, to a softball or a baseball or football game or basketball game. See, my, I like sports, but what you don't know about this pretty little woman over here, she's a sports nut. But that's where we went. I, I got to throw this in. When we lived in Richmond, my oldest daughter worked at U EKU and so she'd get us season tickets at half price. And we went to a game one night and or one day, and they, I don't know who they were playing, but the guy from the other team caught a punt or something. He was running down the field and it looked like he was going to make it all the way for a touchdown. And I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, you know, to myself, stop him, stop him. All of a sudden I hear this voice saying, get him, get him, kill him, kill him. That's true. <laughs> and I thought, who is this? And I look over to my right, and my wife's standing over there saying, get him, you know. So I just scooted down a couple seats, and she stood by herself. I mean, she, she, she loves sports. I want you to know, but I want you to know something. When you and I became a child of God, we can stand up because we've got the power in us. We don't have to listen to the devil. We don't have to stand there and, and, and look and say, oh, devil, I don't want I heard a guy one time, and I was at a church, and I, 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 I wanted to go down and shake him. Somebody said to him, this, brother, how you been this week? He said, oh, I've had a rough week. And he went on. He said, the devil's been after me all week. Bless his name. <laughs> Bless whose name? De you know, let me tell you something. I don't know if you want to get mad at me. Not, but you don't have to live in defeat. Amen. You might have a rough week. And you and I might have a rough week before the temple of God. And you and I might go through a difficult time. Is Nina is right down with her ankle. And, and, and so forth. But I'll tell you what, you can still shout victory. You can still walk because you're a child of the king. And when you got saved, I'll tell you what, you and I have royal blood. I had a, uh, an evangelist to me one time, and he said, you know, Pastor, he said, oh, when I, go, I had to go to the doctor one day, and I, they were taking blood out of my arm, and he said, I told the nurse, be careful with that blood. And she said, what do you mean? He said, that's royal blood. Amen. 
I want you to know we're filled with the blood of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You and I are the temple of the living God, and we can walk in victory. We can walk in his power. We can walk in his anointing. We can walk in his blessing. We can walk in faith in him, knowing that everything is going to be all right. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Please be to God. Amen. I don't believe in dancing, but that's in the spirit. Amen. I want you to know something. God's real. Amen. I tell you what. We don't have to. Uh, Tim, sit down and say, oh, poor me. Get a hold of God. Amen. Let God bless you. Let God minister unto you because you're a temple of the living God. And he lives within us. And we need to walk in victory. But we cannot let the enemy come in because when you do, there becomes a blot in your life. Once you're saved doesn't mean I can go out and do what I did. No, you can't. There's a change that takes place, and you and I walk with God, and we, we trust God. And notice what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 and 20. Notice this. Get it. I don't know if is Tim up there. He got it. Bless his heart. I know, I know what it's like, Pastor, to have to do two things in one night. <laughs> In, 16, in chapter 16 of Corinthians, notice what Paul says again there when he says in that in 1 Corinthians, he said, what, Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God. Ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. Paul lays down some things that we cannot do anymore. See, when I became a child of God, I, I wanted to go to church up at that time, as I said before. The only time I went in those days uh, in Pentecostal churches, you didn't go to movies. You know, you, you, didn't, you didn't do some of those things. You didn't drink. You didn't smoke. You shouldn't do, do smoking today either, but we won't go there. Anyways, there were things. So we went to the ball games. We went to church. But when I got saved, I wanted to go to church. Before that, I didn't care what the preacher said. I just hoped he'd hurry up and get done so I could get out of there and take my, wife, my girlfriend at that time and we'd go someplace and eat and, you know, didn't do much anything else but go to church and eat. <laughs> but we enjoyed it. I'll tell you what, when you're in love, you can see, you can, I'll tell you what, love is blind. <laughs> Amen. I, di I, didn't, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Okay, John, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways. You walk with God, you love God. You don't do the things of the world. When I got saved, became a temple of the living God. Amen. God lives in me now. The devil's gone. He's no longer around. He no longer has any foothold. And I began to walk with God. And God tells us in these, in these scriptures here, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, be ye unequally yoked. Now, he's talking to the church here now. He's not talking to the world. And be, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For wh what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? For what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Baal? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, and God has said, I will dwell in you and walk and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. There's a change. There's an old song, Cortez is saying, there's been a change in me since Jesus set me free. There's been a change in you and I today. We no longer do those things. We no longer defile the body. Uh, we walk with God. We, we do what God wants us to do because we, we, we cannot. He warns about defiling the temple, which is us. So how do you do that? You walk. 
The Bible says in uh, Hebrews, uh, tells us, I believe in 13.8, uh, uh, holiness unto the Lord. Now, holiness is not a dirty word, people. It's a separation, sanctification, and holiness is part of the word of God that you and I need to walk according to God's word. We need to walk according to the calling of God. We need to stand upon the word of God. We need to believe God. I'm a temple. You're a temple of the Holy Ghost. And you don't want to do anything to defile that temple. Amen? You know, I, I'm a child of God. Amen? And I, I don't want to, I'm not going to do anything deliberately to, to defile the temple. We cannot do anything today to defile the temple of God. We cannot allow the enemy to get in and get a foothold. Because you have authority. And let me say that again. Let me remind you, church, you and I have authority in the Lord. Amen. We have authority to stand upon the word of God and rebuke the devil. Amen. I don't have to sit around and talk to him all week. When he comes in, I know who he is. I just tell him to get out. I read a story once where a little girl got saved and <clears throat> they were talking about the enemy coming. She said, when when the, when the devil knocks at the door, I don't go to the door. She says, I send Jesus. I send Jesus. Amen. When you and I are a child of God, amen, we're a temple of God. Amen. And the beauty of God. You know, as I, going back to, to Andy's car, it was just like it came off the showroom floor. Everything had been fixed. Everything was in order. Everything was there. And, and and it was beautiful. I don't know what he sold it for, <coughs> but I'm sure he got a, a good amount of money out of it. But he took that which was no good and made something. He took you and I that were no good and made something. Amen. I'll tell you what. We're a temple of God. Amen. We, 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 we walk with God. We rejoice in the Lord. We're, we're his temple. We, we belong to him, and he belongs to us. We're a temple of God. We're the beauty of God. We're the temple of God. He doesn't have, we're not in a building. We are the building of God. Amen. Hope I'm getting through to you tonight. How, how beautiful you are. Amen. Amen. We, we dress up, we, of course, men aren't supposed to, some, a few do, I guess, here and there, but you know, we, I remember, let me put it like this. God wants to do something within us. He wants us to look good. Amen. He wants us to, to let people take notice that you're a child of him. You're his child. You're his temple. You belong to him. I want you to know, we're the temple of the living God. Ladies, you're beautiful in the sight of God. Men, you're handsome in the sight of God. Amen. Because we are his temple. His spirit dwells within us. Nothing else but him. And we, can, we don't want to do anything to come against him that temple. We want God to see us. Glory be to God. I don't know about you, but it ought to excite you to know that you're the temple of the living God who's coming. I'll get to that a little bit in closing. He's coming back for his church. Not any church, but his church. I'm not talking just about the assemblies. He's talking, coming back for the church that's washed in the blood, walking with him, his temple, he's going to come back for that church one of these days soon. Now listen, we are his church. We are the church. In Colossians chapter 7, or chapter 1, verse 27, you follow me okay tonight? I'm trying so hard not to get too heavy. I enjoy this walk with God, people. I've been saved over 62 years, and I'll tell you what. I can you know there's been some valleys, there's been some ups, and there's been some downs. There's been some in-betweens. There's been some heartache. There's been some pain. But through it all, amen, because I'm the temple of the living God. Through it all, glory be to God, I'm going on. Through it all, he's brought me through it. Through it all, he's brought you through it because you're part 
of his kingdom. You're his temple. You, he dwells in you and you in him. Through it all. He's coming back for the church. He's coming back for a temple. And we're the temple of the living God. Notice what it says. We are the church. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. To whom God would, would make known that it is the riches of glory. And uh, of this mystery among the Gentiles. Which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. We're his temple. Are you following me tonight? We're his temple. These might be unusual scriptures, but I was <clears throat> trying to bring this together today, and I thought we, we are to walk in his power. We're not defeated. We don't have to worry about what we, well, we do in a sense, but Washington can't doesn't know what they're doing, so follow the Lord. We are to walk in his power. In Luke 24, 49, part of that chapter, verse says, Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. Till you be equipped. That word uh, endued means equipped, clothed with power on high. He's equipped the church. We're the church. We're his temple. We're the ones that must dwell with him. We must walk with him in holiness and be separate from the world. That doesn't mean you can't have fun, you know. I mean, I sat in a class one day in a Sunday school class and listening to this teacher talk, and she was talking about, about being holy and so forth and the holiness of God. And she had long hair way down past her waist and uh, and so forth and she didn't wear any makeup and she was boasting on that you know I don't she, I don't wear makeup I don't even use powder well I didn't use powder anyways but any, but for her and she was talking about this and how she uh, where she bought her clothes and so forth she didn't buy new clothes and there's nothing wrong with that but I felt she was just out of order to do what she was doing. I didn't say anything, but she was boasting because she didn't wear any makeup. I leaned over to my wife and said it wouldn't hurt if she did. <laughs> and so my wife hit me, you know. You know. I don't know if the teacher thought I was getting blessed or not, you know. But anyways, I wasn't. God saved you and I to enjoy this walk with him. The temple of the living God. Amen. We're a temple of God. We're his temple. And we must walk with him. In the Old Testament, we see the temple and the tabernacle, how it was put together by God, everything in place, the way God wanted to do. It was perfect. When see when God, you got saved and heaven came down and glory filled your soul. You became his temple. Clothed in his righteousness. Clothed in his anointing. Clothed in his power. To be what he would want you to be. God help us tonight. To be the temple of the living God. There's a lot we could go. We could go on and on. But I, I want to give you that you are the temple. When you go out tonight, no matter what people say, I'm, I'm the temple of God. And his glory, his presence dwells in us. I'm using cars as an illustration. You know, my wife knows more about cars than I do. But, I mean, I'm so glad I married a country girl, farmer's daughter. Man, I'll tell you what. She can mow the yard faster than I can. But when I was pastoring years ago, I drove school bus for many years, but driving for this one system, we went to General Motors plant in Lansing, Michigan on a field trip to a car they quit making several years ago, but some of you might remember the Oldsmobile. 
And uh, so we went to see how the Oldsmobile was put together. We saw how they put, made the motor and all that. And of course, that was in, it was a, a larger class, probably sixth graders or something. So those boys was in, really interested in those big V8s they were making and, and so forth. But then he took us to the conveyor line. And our guide told us, now he said, I want you to look at this frame, you know, the frame like they make out here on Ring Road. You see him with those. So I want you to look at that frame now. Keep your eye on that frame. He said, we're going to follow that frame. They were making, I think, about 90 cars an hour. And back in those days, Olds was really selling. And he said, I want you to watch that frame. There wasn't anything in that frame, just painted black and two this way and two this way. And, but as we watched that frame, as it moved along, we saw the the rear end come in. All of a sudden, we saw the engine drop down. The wheels came on. The tires came on. Then came the dash and the motor. And then dropped down from the ceiling came the body for that particular car. And I watched that that day. And I, God's brought it to my memory, remembrance today. Uh, as I watched that car go along, things were added to it. It didn't stay just a frame. In one hour, we saw it go off the assembly line and saw a guy get in it, looked it all over, checked a few things, started it up, and drove it off there to take it to wherever they take him to ship him out. What are you saying, Father Boss? I'm saying this. That stopped then. But ours doesn't stop. As you and I walk with God, we started out as a frame. You follow me? But as you walked with God, God began to do something in your life. He began to give you strength. He began to give you power. He began to bless you. He began to lift you up. He began to strengthen you. And he added something, made it stronger. You see, you grow in the Lord. As you walk with him, you learn to grow in him. As one songwriter said, the sweeter, the longer I serve him, the sweeter it grows. And as they, as it walked, that car, at the end it was a beautiful car, all painted, ready to go wherever they're going to ship it and be sold to somebody as a brand new car. See, you and I are walking with God, and it's a daily process. If I can use it this way, a little on the crude, on the crude side, but we're on God's conveyor belt. Walking along, and he comes along and adds to it. He comes along and says, and strengthens us. And so the longer we walk with him, the stronger we become. And the, the stronger we come in, in him, so we walk with him. God's temple. You see that temple that was built, the tabernacle and the temple, Solomon's temple and the tabernacle of the wilderness. As they built it and put in it what God wanted in it, the stronger it came. And it might not look like much on the outside, but on the inside was the glory of God. And they walked in his presence. God adding to our lives every day, even through the ups and the downs, he's adding to our life every day. He's ministering to us every day. And as we, we look into the Word of God, I go to Psalms chapter 23, not, not the fourth verse. 
me find it here quickly. But I want you to notice verse 5 and 6 of Psalms 23. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. My, my. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God has made you and I a temple. He's taken that which was ugly and made something out of it. And he's coming back for a temple. If I may, I'd like to just give a little quick background. I'm not going to spend time on it. But as I grew up, I was raised in a godly home, Pentecostal home. But when I became about 15, 16 years old, I refused to go to church. My dad used to try and make me go, and then we'd end up in a fisticuff. So he quit. And I refused to go to church, have nothing to do with God. I've got a point here I want to get across. I'm not boasting. I'm, I'm just giving a point. I'm like our pastor sharing a little bit here of what God's done. I got to where, you know, I was the kind of a man that didn't have anything used for God. I could stand in church and swear and cuss. Didn't bother me a bit. I could stand in our house. Sometimes uh, my folks would in, in, in those days would have a, a minister and evangelist come with and stay at the house. And if they were outside, of course, I couldn't smoke in the house, but I smoked outside when I got older. And uh, I'd stand there and smoke and blow smoke. Just had no, no use whatsoever for God. Had nothing to do with it. Had a temper. I never drank. Never did drugs. But I smoked real heavy. I would smoke up to some days three packs of cigarettes in one day. If I didn't smoke, some of you have heard this before, but if I didn't smoke cigarettes, I smoked a cigar. And I smoked a pipe. And to top it all off, I chewed. I mean, that was my life. With a temper, didn't like you. I could tell you to your face, I didn't like you. I could sit right beside you, sit there, and never look at you. And if you talk to me, I'd ignore you. I would have nothing to do with, no. I was not a man who went out looking for fights. Didn't back off, but I wasn't one to look for them. Just had a bad attitude, had a temper. And then I went into the army with the same attitude. If it hadn't been for my first sergeant, I would have been in the stockade because my CO, my company commander, asked me a question one day and I read him the riot act right to his face. Now I'm not boasting. My first sergeant, I got a point here now, told me to shut up and he saved me from losing my stripes and being court-martialed. But you see, in the process of this, I said that to say this, in spite of all that, I'm still God saved me, and I'm a temple of the living God. And God put in my, in my way, give me about five minutes, two minutes, God, about what time I got to go? It's quarter after uh, don't tell me stuff to me. <laughs> okay, thank you. But God put in my way a little 14-year-old girl 
that made my heart flip. Can I tell you, after 62 years of marriage, she still makes it flip. And, you know, it was through her. God put her there. And, of course, I didn't like going to church, didn't like God, didn't have anything. But then all of a sudden, if I was going to date her, church. Where are we going today? Church. Well, let's, we go to a basketball game, a football game. And Sunday, church. Wednesday, if I, I drove truck, but if I was on a home, church. And then she graduated, not at 14, but when I got back from the Army, we dated. While I was in the Army, of course, she wasn't for it when he got out. My wife graduated from high school. She was 16 when she graduated. And I'm saying that to say this. I didn't marry her at 16. I waited till she turned 17. <laughs> True. She turned 17 in, in September. We got married in October. But God, in 1955, but God sent somebody my way from the same church my parents went to and her parents went. And we got married, but she, is that, you've heard me say it. I'm going to say it again. Hear me. She had a stipulation, I'll save you when you get saved. And she made it very plain, I won't wait forever. But in that process of time, a minister who did not know who I was, but again, going with my wife, we went to a revival. This preacher came down and stood beside me and led me to the Lord. I became a temple of the living God. Cleansed and made whole. And she'd already made a, a commitment to herself. I guess she told somebody, if Doc's not saved by the time in October, I'm going to give him back the ring. But in October, I gave her another ring. God's blessed. I'm saying that to say this. God changes our lives. And we become a temple of the living God. Can I say to you here tonight, you saved, you're a temple. Amen. Because his royal blood flows through your vein. He had, you had the blessing of God. You have what God has for you today. And because of that, you and I are going to live forever with him. Amen. Our pastor preached Sunday on the coming of the Lord, and I was blessed. But Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And Paul, David said, and so shall I ever be with the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of the life. And so shall I ever be with the Lord. I want you to stand with me tonight. This might not be, this wasn't really kind of the way I intended to do this tonight, but. God seemed to lead it this way. Can I tell you, as we listen to this chorus, it's all right with the pastor. I'll just go ahead and close for us. And would you play that, please? Jesus is coming back. He's coming back for his church. And we're in the temple. Listen to this and let God minister to you. I love to tell the no, story. Chapter Ten. Ten. <laughs>
that will be what a day what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his yes the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land what a day glorious day that will be think of it the temple of God where will be no listen sorrow there no more burdens to bear no more sickness hallelujah no hallelujah no more the Marit over there and forever I will be with the one who died for me what a day glorious day that will be And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. can hold me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm homesick for heaven. I've got a longing to go. That will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When I had my heart attack 17 years ago and I was in a hospital in Florida, Fort Pierce, Florida, and they put a stent in me and they came in. At that time, I weighed about 260 pounds. And uh, the doctor came in and said to me, he said, well, Mr. Bostrich, what do you want to do? You want to live or die? <laughs> That's what he said to me. I said, well, I want to live. He said, okay, here's what you got to do. Here's what you got to do. He wasn't being smart or cocky. He was just asking me a question. You know, here you are. My wife showed me a picture of me the other day, and it was depressing. You know, out like this. And uh, he just said, you want to live or die? I said, well, I want to live. He said, what you got to do? I want to live. So one of these days when he comes, what a day that's going to be. But here's what you got to do. You got to live for him. You got to walk with him. You got to trust him. You got to put your hand in his. You got to walk by faith. You got to, you got to, glory be to God. You got to believe God and trust God. And one of these days, as Ivan Parker says in his song about the Lord, he says, when I get to heaven, I'm going to hit the road running. I want you to know something when I see Jesus. Get out of my way because here I come. Amen, amen. Well, don't you want to see your parents? Don't you want to see your uh, Moses and all, the, all the, the apostles? I got all eternity to see them. I want to see Jesus. 
And if you and I are ready, amen, and our temple is all in order, glory. Woo! I got to quit. We're going to see him. What a day that's going to be. But we need to get our temple, get our house in order, and let God minister to us. Is your temple in order tonight? Is everything in place? Is everything you're striving to do to, to, so you can be blessed of God, feel his power and his anointing? I want to pray in just a moment. And while I pray, I want you to believe God. Amen. And pastors told me to go ahead and close. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we've enjoyed your presence tonight. God, I ask in Jesus' name, you'll touch every heart that's here and touch every one of this church. God, may we be the temple you've called us to be. A temple with your presence. A temple that you can bless. A temple that will lift you up and be cleansed in your presence. God, be with us today. God, direct us the rest of this week as we come back to church Sunday. God, may we keep this temple in order the way you would want it to be. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Don't forget Sunday. Sunday school.